I'm Jenny King um, and I want to tell you the story of the Pilgrim Embroideries. Uh, the embroideries have been made over the last two years, especially for Mayflower 400. And um, they've been a, a labour of love. Uh, anyway, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a retired teacher and an artist and uh, I love embroidery as well. And uh, I started to get very interested in the pilgrims about four years, four or five years ago, uh, when I went on a, a visit with Sue Allen around the pilgrim churches of this area. Um, shortly after that, I think um, there was a, an exhibition at the town hall and um, that was to try and drum up interest for Mayflower 400. And uh, I think Rick was there and lots of people from the Christian Heritage Group. So I started to read a little bit more about the pilgrims. Shortly after that, um, there was an art exhibition at Babworth Church. And while I was there with my artwork, I thought, what a beautiful church. Wouldn't it be lovely to do something a little bit more permanent for the church and to donate it to the church. So um, time went past and while we were on holiday that year, I visited the Quaker tapestries in Kendall. Absolutely beautiful embroideries. Uh, they produce a little booklet of um, their stitching. It was done on beautiful fabric, uh, woolen fabric, with woolen threads. There were instructions of how to do some of the stitches, so it sort of hit a chord with me. So yes, ideas are born in funny ways. Uh, and all of this came together, and I decided that I really would like to do an embroidery, just one, uh, to start with, and uh, donate it to Babworth Church. So um, that was the idea. Uh, so I set about designing, uh, there was nothing to go on really, and I set about thinking about the pilgrims um, who were the early separatists who actually lived around this area. And um, I understand there were some very influential priests in the churches of this area who were very well educated for the, the time uh, in the 17th century and the rich families had given them the positions in the churches so these priests had picked up a lot of new separatist ideas and so they were preaching to the villagers um, who actually went from village to village uh, following some of them even though they were fined for doing so for not going to their own churches so I thought about this and thought, well, the embroideries really need to depict something from this area. Uh, a little bit more about the people who lived here, the early separatists. So my designs um, have got the villagers walking towards the churches that were the key churches of the, um, this area, that were pre where the preachers were preaching the separatist ideas and uh, we have Richard Clifton at Babworth and I think it is known that people walked from Scrooby to Babworth which is a good 14 mile round trip uh, to hear him speak so he must have been a very influential person um, there were others in the group in the uh, similar area uh, here there was George Turvin who was the vicar of um, this church, um, uh, St. Swithin's in East Retford. Um, we have William Bradford, who came from Osterfield. He was baptised in Osterfield Church, but then he later moved to be with the Brewsters, uh, William Brewster at Scrooby. So we have quite a collection of um, influential people preaching new ideas. And of course, these villagers if you think about it, wouldn't have had televisions or anything like that. So they would have made um, them their own entertainment by discussing what they'd heard during the day. Uh, we also have in the area two other preachers who were teachers, really, uh, John Robinson and John Smith from Sturton the Steeple. So uh, you can see that my information and, and learning was beginning to, to multiply. Now, I also thought, this is going to be quite a big project. 
and I was secretary of the Creative Textile Group in Retford at the time. And I thought, oh, uh, being as Rick and the Christian Heritage Group would like more people involved in the Mayflower 400, I invited him over for a talk and he came along with Anna and uh, gave a very good informative talk and it actually inspired about 10 other members of the Creative Embroidery Group. Um, that group was part of the Embroiderers Guild, so people um, like Janet and some of others as well had city and guilds qualifications and they were very, very able needlewomen. So I thought, oh, that would be really good if we could all um, get together and make the, the one embroidery for a start. But after a while, I realised that we needed more embroideries because more people needed to be able to get round the floor frames. These were mounted while we were making them on wooden floor frames, which were quite large. So we ordered the fabric, which was the same fabric that was woven in the Lake District um, that the people used for the tapestries there. And we ordered lots of, of the coloured colours that we thought we might need um, in wool. And this is some of the, the sort of thread that we used. Um, it's a little bit finer than tapestry wool, uh, but it's very nice to work with. It fills space as well. Now, the only thing with doing something like this is we didn't want to mark the front of the embroidery. So what we had to do was make a, a backing, first of all, um, and then transfer the design onto a cotton backing. And then the laborious part was stitching the outlines of the people and the churches through to the right side. Um, I have one or two uh, photographs of that that you may see later. Um, so that took quite a long time and uh, we couldn't wait to get onto the fronts of the embroideries. Now at that time the 10 or so people who were involved, um, one or two illnesses happened and one or two accidents and unfortunately um, it dwindled to five of us. So the five met for two years and we carried uh, on the work in my sunroom uh, on Friday mornings and we had a lot of fun. We shared stories and tales. We had a member, uh, Faye, who brought uh, lots of scones that she'd made each week. So it, it was a very enjoyable two years. Um, now, what I would like to do is to introduce um, Janet because uh, Janet did some work uh, and most of the work on the Sturton Le Steeple embroidery. My name is Janet Archer and I worked on the Sturton Le Steeple embroidery. Um, although I've stitched and made things for a long time and I'm part of the um, creative textile group that Jenny belongs to, this is the first time I've done anything so traditional but I really really enjoyed doing it. It was very um, meditative to sit and hand stitch every Friday morning. We really enjoyed it. Hello, I'm Lynn Havland of the Pilgrim Embroiderers. I produced the templates that were used as guides for, for the narrative at the bottom of the embroideries. I worked mainly on the architecture of Scrooby and Babworth churches and stitched the odd figure here and there. The other two ladies who were involved uh, was, were Faye um, Everson and um, Beverly Naylor. Um, so we all met, as I said, to do these special stitches. Um, one of the stitches that was very, very time consuming was the man with the red coat on the left hand side um, here, uh, some um, split stitch. And then we had chain stitches that we used, quite a lot of chain stitch. And then we all learnt a new one called Bayer stitch, which uh, the lady's skirt here, the blue skirt on certain the steeple, uh, shows that nicely. Besides that, we used fly stitch, which helped, it was more of an open stitch, to uh, make texture on the um, clothes of the people. The dogs, we've got one or two little dogs and... Uh, small children, uh, they were done with a lot of straight stitches. So um, we got to the point of doing these embroideries and it dawned on me that they were going to be quite expensive to frame um, and I knew that if they were going to go into churches they needed to be in 
probably in oak frames, which would last forever, hopefully, um, and uh, under glass. Um, obviously, you know, they've got to be protected from damp and anything else that might um, sort of get into or fly around a church. So um, I knew it was going to be costly. I had an estimate and it was um, way over 700 pounds or so for the actual estimate. Um, besides that, I wanted to make a map that was framed of where all the different embroideries were around the five churches. So again, that has been framed in oak. Uh, and that they will go alongside each of the embroideries so that people can follow a trail if they wish to. So raising awareness, how did we manage to um, make the donations or the, the, the collections to help with the framing costs? Well, it meant a lot of letter writing. And also, uh, at this point, I got in touch with Rick, who's been very, very helpful in suggesting some venue that we could go to over the, the course of last summer. So the places we uh, found ourselves in, we were a little bit sort of, it was filled with trepidation uh, because we weren't really the sort that wanted to go out and show our work, but uh, that's what we did. And we ended up in uh, Babworth Church for the Snowdrop Festival and also for the Thanksgiving art exhibitions, made very welcome at Babworth. Uh, we came to St Swithin's, East Retford, for Charter Day and sat in the chancel. Uh, we had a lot of interest, a lot of people came along, and the idea was to get them to do a stitch, if they would, so that they felt as though they belonged to the project. Um, besides that, Rick suggested that we uh, went to the events in the square um, called the Square Deal events, and I think it was the town forum's idea to try and get people to come into the square on Sundays. So. The suggestion was that we sat in Spencer's window inside a, a sort of a, a restaurant and public house, which was very revealing. You know, we sat among the customers and I think they wondered who we were and what we were doing at times, but we carried on and had great fun. Uh, I made cards, I made a scrapbook and uh, people looked at, at those as uh, they obviously seen as doing the work. And they were fascinated, actually, by the fact that we were sitting in places like that, I think. Um, besides that, we um, went to Misterton. We were invited to Misterton Flower and Vegetable Show. Again, rather a strange venue, but we managed. And uh, again, uh, drummed quite a lot of interest. Uh, the one highlight uh, here was the visit by Bishop Sentimu. And... Uh, Actually, we got a lovely place just, just near the pulpit, so we got a really good view, and we brought the embroideries and showed them off to the congregation um, and the bishop. Uh, people came along that evening, at, at some older ladies, and told us great tales about how they'd done their, their embroideries, and uh, we were hoping that it perhaps encouraged them to go home and do some more. Um, Heritage Day was another day that we spent um, out and about with people. Uh, we had the foyer at the Little Theatre in Retford and shared that space with the arts, uh, well, an art group that I'm in. Um, so we had another great day. Loads and loads of people came and saw what we were doing. Uh, the opening of the Pilgrim Centre at the museum um, was one of the, the last events um, and that was great fun. Um, and, uh, we met many, many councillors who were very, very interested. And of course, all this generated interest and generated funds. So we have actually made the framing and everything um, quite easily uh, from the publicity that we did. Um, by about that time, we got to the lettering part on the embroideries. And as Lynn's explained, um, that took quite a, a while to do. We needed not to have too much writing, uh, about 20 words per embroidery. Um, and it was all done through tracing paper that Lynn had mapped out uh, the words on. Um, Anna Scott helped us to get the wording correct because she is an expert on this period in history. Um, so we wanted it to be um, as it should be. So each embroidery depicts the priest or the teacher that um, helped to spread the separatist ideas in the particular villages. 
Then came the finishing touches. Well, the finishing touches were the background details. Uh, it was lovely doing the characters, but when you're doing an, a piece of artwork, you need it to be balanced and the composition to be right. So uh, we've added little trees and, and shrubs and grass and things like that. I worked a lot on the um, St. Swithin's Church, uh, which actually was a, 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 the photograph of the church was three three dimensional, which was very difficult to get the um, uh, lines right to make it look like a proper three dimensional church. So uh, Lynn also worked an awful lot on the Scrooby Church, and again that was quite um, detailed. You had to get the angle of of the roof and the windows and things um, exactly right, or the church just didn't look like a church. Um, so, uh, the finishing touches finished, we decided then it was time to mount them because that was a, another expense that we were hoping to save. Um, my husband and I had looked at uh, the sort of things that we needed to have to mount the work and um, it mentioned things like um, special quality uh, tape, it, acid free backing, uh, cotton bump, um, you name it, all sorts of things that we'd not dealt with before. So we found out how to do this from help from the Quaker Tapestry uh, people. They have a blog uh, on their website, which is very, very helpful. Um, anyway, we spent a week uh, layering the different backings to make it firm, layering the, mount, the uh, padding over, and at each stage it all had to be glued with special glue and dried before the next layer. So it took about a week to make all the mounts, uh, the soft mounts, that are, even before we got to the framing. Anyway, the framing came along um, early in 2020. And we had a terrible spring, didn't we? It was very rainy. And uh, we went on our way to the framers of, at Newark, hills at Newark. And uh, the Trent had overfill, overflowed its banks. The fields were full of water. And we thought, oh, goodness, you know, I hope Newark's OK when we get there. So the framing happened. It had to happen around the framers' holidays. And the lockdown happened on the very day that I was meant to be collecting the embroideries. But there was no way that I was going to leave the embroideries in Newark. So I'm afraid we nipped to Newark quickly that morning and uh, collected them. So they've been safely stored uh, until we can find time to put them into the churches. They're all going to be donated to the churches and um, I'm hoping that people will be interested because they already know what is coming um, and um, hopefully um, they'll be there for many, many years to come. So this is the map of the locations of the embroideries um, which will go alongside each one in each of the churches. Uh, since then, um, I've written a book about how the embroideries have been made, so pretty similar to the, this talk, but uh, that is the title page of the, of the book and it's actually being printed at the moment.